Hey Eurovision fans, it's Tom Comte from Liverpool and I'm back for another Eurovision analysis video. Today I'm going to be going through all the 16 countries in semi-final number 2 and giving you my final predictions on which 10 I think are going to qualify. So, let's kick in. So in the end, I've decided to mix my dress rehearsal review video with my semi-final predictions. I'm going to put them both together. So while I'm giving my predictions, I'll tell you a little bit about the dress rehearsal. But if you want to see my full re review of that, I did it on Twitter. You don't have to join Twitter to see it. You can just see my profile page. And I went through each country one by one and gave like a short synopsis about what I thought about their performance. I forgot my board marker today. <laughs> so you can see I've drawn some orange lines on with a highlighter. I'm actually going to try and use a graphic to put over here to draw the lines on a lot like Poland does. I'm gonna try and be Poland and make this into lines. Hopefully it works. Okay let's get some of the easy ones out of the way, the ones that are like quite obvious. So my first definite qualifier is Austria. Look I was a tiny bit disappointed with their dress rehearsal. It's really beautiful and slick but it's lost a lot of the humor and fun from the music video. It's still excellent, it's still going through but I felt before when it had the humor it could possibly be in the dark horse to win. Now I'm thinking less so. It feels like they're trying to appeal to the juries more by being more serious. So I think it's definite top 10 but I think it's Talavote is going to take a small hit but this is definitely qualifying. I think it won the public poll yesterday. It's still fun, it's just not as fun and quirky as the music video was. The middle-aged men that they had dancing in the music video have been replaced for this like quite trippy woman in like a dystopian costume. It actually looks a little bit like Samantha Tina. Samantha Tina is still breathing. Do you remember her backup dancers? That it looks like that, and then they've multiplied it and done these trippy effects with it that looks a little bit like John Malkovich movie from the 90s. So yeah, look still love this i'm just a little bit disappointed that they're not going for that big win the vocals are mostly there some tiny slip ups but yeah i still think this is a definite qualifier and hopefully this goes a little bit viral and they get some recognition and they get some streaming numbers so they can afford some gas station champagne hopefully this doesn't fall like it did yesterday let's go with a definite no and that is San Marino, Jax. I just can't see this going through. The staging looks cool, they've got some good ideas. Uh, there's bits where it lies on the ground, there's some cool graphics. I just think song-wise it feels a bit too repetitive. This doesn't have much traction in the community. It's not the type of song I would expect to do well in the community, but yeah, I just don't really know who the audience is for this. If you like rock sounding music, you've got Slovenia, you've got Australia, who I think just do it better performance wise and song wise. So, lovely guys, but I'd be very surprised if this went through. These three countries are obviously, I know they've qualified. These are the three countries who are voting in this semi final. So, there's no Italy there. And obviously, San Marino, they are Italian. Okay, unfortunately, another definite no is Romania. Theodore. Absolutely adore this guy. So much respect for him. He's so young, 18, possibly turned 19. He's done all the staging himself, I believe. He's designed it, he's so theatrical. His energy, his performance is really, really exceptional. I'm so proud of him. But yeah, the staging, it looks cool. It has like some lava in it. And there's this moment where he's in a white t-shirt and then the girl's in a big white t-shirt. I don't know, the whole thing just is a little bit messy. And the national final was really exciting and messy. This just feels like, less messy but also a lot less exciting than the national panel was i would say he had monetary constraints probably wasn't able to fly over all those dancers i'm not sure what the funding situation is but i heard that he's had to do a lot of this on his own please correct me if that's wrong so would love this to be a surprise one going through but it would be a surprise let's go for another definite yes and that is australia oh no that's wrong <laughs> Australia in the correct way. This is amazing. It closes the show. Everything I've already said about them, they're brilliant, very professional. Each one of them is extremely entertaining on stage, so you can watch all of them. I love their choreographed spin together. The staging is exciting, it's fun, dynamic. They're in a great running order slot, they're last. Nobody's gonna forget them. Keep in mind now, in terms of the Talovo for Australia, every time they've qualified into the final, they've also qualified in the Talovo. They've been top 10 in that as well, apart from Isaiah Firebrace. So there's only one time they've needed the jury to qualify. So yeah, Australia do do well in the Televote in the semi-finals, and this will be the same UK's voting as well. I'm sh I've heard that traditionally they actually don't give that many points to Australia, but I think that they'll like this this year. Let's go to a likely yes, and that is Lithuania. Yeah, this is really, really classy song. Very well staged. Monica Linkita is an amazing performer. We know that Lithuania has a diaspora, which are really 
involved in Eurovision and love it. She doesn't need that, just like Monica Leo didn't need that diaspora last year, but it definitely helps. This song will get through anyway, but because it has a diaspora, I'm moving it into a likely yes, because it's very beautiful, it's near the end. It's ballady, but it's got that kind of entertaining staging in the same way that Switzerland did. It's got that cool sisterhood feel where the four ladies come around her. Beautiful graphics behind. Monica nails the song every single time. I'm very confident this is going through. I'm maybe not putting, I would almost put it definite, but I think the only reason I'm putting it definite is maybe the song just isn't super wow. It's maybe a little bit too safe. Another likely yes is Cyprus, Andrew Lambrou. Yeah, look, there's nothing risky in this staging. It's water and fire visuals nature actually there's quite a big block of nature there's iceland and cyprus and and also estonia is a little bit nature so there's a lot of nature visuals at the start he it still looks great it's very put together it's it, this is very safe it's a very handsome guy singing a very solid song with some very pretty visuals i think this is cyprus going for kind of like a more safer card keep in mind they had that amazing qualification record prior to last year i think it was five or six in a row they lost it last year although they did qualify with the televote this has Greece, it has Australia. This is a solidly formulaic approach to Eurovision, which I have no problem with. I really enjoyed the song. It was in my original top 10. Yeah, there's a small chance it doesn't go through. That's why I'm putting it through as a likely, but uh, I expect it to qualify. Let's talk about the lady who's currently rehearsing this very moment. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted for her song. And that is Armenia, Brunette. Now this staging is so pretty. They've built this diagonal prop and because of that they're able to do these camera tricks on her which look completely different from everyone else she's got this projections onto her body it's absolutely stunning and her voice is whoa oh it's really amazing she sounds like an angel it sounds so perfect there's like a slight echo effect that they've put onto her voice as well which just sounds really haunting but her vocals are exceptionally good there's a dance break added in i don't know if you had heard that on social media it's completely and utterly random. It doesn't really make sense in the song whatsoever. I still loved it. I was freaking out when it happened. And it's a good dance break. She dances well. It just doesn't massively make sense in the context of a future lover. <laughs> but I don't really care. Sometimes I just want to be entertained and I don't want to think about it too much. Yeah, and when she's in the rap part, there's these gorgeous black and white visuals. There's so much pretty stuff about this. People are really going to remember it. I think this is a very strategic way at making a huge impact from the second running order slot. So really, really clever from our media. Yet again, they're on a really great roll right now. This is a likely yes. The only reason it's not definite is because of its running order, number two. Okay, let's go to a borderline no, and that is Greece. Now, this has dark horse potential. This could absolutely not really surprise and be one of the ones that goes through. I'm just trying to be practical with the information I have. It's cleaned up, the vocals are much better. That clip we saw where his vocals were shaky, is not accurate she is ac he is actually very good he does jump a lot it is part of the staging that's not him being too nervous it seems like they've planned it there are a lot of leds of him like almost constant i would say 80 percent of the back visuals is leds of his head or his whole body in color and then we have this the cube coming out as well this could do really well in the mainstream totally has potential to qualify but my gut instinct right now is it's not gonna make it but he does a great performance actually really really impressive for a 16 year old okay let's go to another likely yes and that is slovenia now disclaimer these guys are my hotel and they are possibly the nicest people i've ever met in my life they're extremely tall as well <laughs> all of them are really tall they're all taller than i'm six foot and they're all taller than me i think uh, really really lovely guys they come up and say hello to me every breakfast um, just very sweet genuine people i think this staging is really excellent it's very different it's a rocking out feel with a kind of fun, cheeky personality to it. They do quite a few tricks. It's not just them performing. There are concepts in it and ideas which happen. It's, it's I, I actually said to Boyan this morning, I felt it was a little bit like Moneskin. And Moneskin was more kind of like cool glamorous, whereas this is rocking out, but it's fun and carefree. But it's still got that like put together, rocking out style to it. I'm a tiny bit worried about this just because I don't know why I'm worried about it, but I just am. So I really do hope that all the joke right stands, of which there are many, come out and vote for this. I don't take this for granted that this is going through. I'm not going to put it down to borderline, but if you want this in the final and you want to see something different and you want to encourage countries who send their best acts and you want to encourage a different style of music, you need to get out and vote for this. This definitely deserves to be in the final. Plus, it'll break Slovenia's two non-qualification streak. Their last qualifier was Sebi in 2019.
Is the board gonna fall over? Let's go with the borderline no. Another borderline no is Denmark, unfortunately. Now I have to admit, when I was watching the dress rehearsal yesterday, I thought this was really good. It's got a really cool TikTok music video feel. And he's got a great performance style. His body language is great, his mannerisms, he's very cute in how he moves and walks around. The problem here is the vocals. It's when he goes into the falsetto, it's, it's off, it's very strained. They haven't got any backup singers for him, which I don't understand. Uh, I presume the playback is maxed out, but there are parts here that sound really, really weak vocally. And I think when you're first in the running order already, you've got a bit of a barrier to be remembered by the end. And if people only remember you as the person who sounded a little bit off, rest of the world vote may give him big points if all his social media followers followers in Asia come out and support him. So that would be interesting if that's actually the thing that brings him across the line. But yeah, first in the running order, he's a little bit up against it. Very happy that this goes through. I actually really enjoy this entry and I, I think he's very good. I initially put him through and then Armenia elevated for me. So did two other countries who I'm about to talk about. They also elevated and then I put him out. I'm gonna wait until the song's over because the leak of copyrights. Sorry, I had my microphone off. Okay, let's go to another borderline note and that is Iceland. Look, love her, she's incredible. She's an Amazon. Great athleticism, cartwheeling around the stage and jumping up and down. Visually, look, the staging just doesn't add a lot for me. I still think this can go through. I think if this goes through, it's gonna be because of her and her magnetism and how exciting she is. Song-wise, I just think it's a little bit too weak and I don't think they came up with an interesting enough idea that really elevated it, other than her just being epic. Visually, it doesn't really add anything and there's no props and whatnot. So look, very happy she goes through because I'm a big fan of her, but yeah, I just think this is a song issue. I don't think the song is strong enough personally, but very happy if I'm proved wrong. Okay, let's go to a, let's go to a borderline yes, and that is Georgia. Iru singing Aku. Now, I don't know why I'm feeling a little bit doubtful about this. Maybe it's just me being a bit too pessimistic. Look, this, the staging was really magical. I'm just worried that people won't resonate. It's, you know, the, we've had five years in a row now where people haven't resonated with Georgia. So I'm just trying to get out of that mentality. This is really spectacular. It deserves to go through. I know people have issues with the lyrics as well. This staging really looks like a mix between Lorraine and Vesna from Czechia and Sweden. She's got some of the hands coming up on the screen, but she's also got that flurry, mystical cloud feel as well. Performs her very well, she's obviously an excellent singer. Yeah, I don't know why I'm putting, the, I, I just, my gut reaction is that not that this is likely, but I really, 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 really want to go through. It's still my number four ranked song. I want Georgia to break that non-qualification streak that they have. I think I just overanalyzed my favorites. Maybe that's possibly it, because the reaction to this was pretty good. I don't think it did as well in the press poll as I was expecting either. Anyway, I'm still putting through as a borderline yes. Okay, let's talk about a controversial one, and that is Poland. In terms of the staging, it's got some special effects on it like it did last year. Um, there's a fisheye effect at the start, which is a little bit cheesy. And then we've got the dance break and whatnot. You'll see it when you see it tonight. Overall, it's a very fun, carefree, bouncy feel. Have to admit, even without Polish Jasper, I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy this because it is very light and carefree. It has a different feel from everything else. And even though it's cheesy, it's kind of entertaining when it is cheesy. I just don't think enough people know about the controversy that happened in the national final. Now, me personally, I don't blame Blanca for that. I don't think that she's powerful enough in TVP. I blame TVP, the, the broadcaster. You know, I morally, I would prefer that this didn't qualify, but because I think that would be better for Poland to progress and make some changes next year. I think if they qualified, are any lessons really going to be learned if their plan worked? But no hate on her, like, she's not responsible for that. In terms of the Polish diaspora as well, do enough of them know the backstory or care? I met two Polish guys in the lift in my hotel and I said, are you pro Blanca or anti Blanca? And they looked at me in absolute shock and said, we're pro Blanca. And I was like, oh, <laughs> because obviously me being against what happened in the national final, a lot of people in the comments section have been of the same mentality, but there are these other people from Poland who didn't know or didn't care or like Blanca anyway. And then there's the general casual Polish fans who maybe just don't know about it. Also keep in mind, isn't Poland the largest country in Europe that isn't in the big five? So it's just numbers, it's just a lot of Polish people. It's not the Polish people are more patriotic than others, uh, it's just this, the sheer quantity because the population is large. So yeah, I'm putting this through as a likely yes. Not because I wanted to, because just because that's the vibe I'm getting from everyone around me and from the people I've talked to. And if she does qualify, I think she might be opening the final if she draws first half. It'll be, I think it'll be her or Belgium or Portugal is currently gonna open unless Poland or Belgium come and save her. Let's talk about a likely yes and that is Alika. Now this is 11th in the odds to qualify and I don't know why because it's really spectacular. Vocally, she's 
perfection. She nails it every single time. And her energy is excellent as well, actually. Her performance style, her confidence, the way she moves around and still can sing perfectly. We have lots of people who move around this year, but they're losing their breath. She isn't. She still sounds great when she's going from A to B. She hits all her marks. She doesn't lose concentration or focus. Really, really, really impressive. The staging is beautiful. Lots of blues and blacks and kind of soft rippling effects. She's got some interactive elements in the staging as well. This is really, really, really good. I'm not sure why it's 11th. I hope this isn't just a me thing, but I think she did very well in the press poll as well. Yeah, this is beautiful. It feels like the female version of Switzerland and we saw Switzerland was also beautiful, also had great vocals and also went through in a harder semi. This is the same. Fourth in the running order is not great, I'll admit that. Funnily enough, the last five people who've been in the fourth slot have all qualified, but that was with juries, so it could be a little bit different this year. I'm still very confident about this, so I'm hoping this is my shock thing that I'm predicting, because she's currently not qualifying in the odds, so <laughs> I feel like this is like an easy shock win. I'm putting it as a likely. I don't know, I don't see how people could not feel anything when they see this, it's really, and I'm not someone who massively enjoys the song, so it really elevated for me. Two countries left, I have Belgium, and Albania. Oh, I have to stop talking because it's Andrew. Panic Records, copyright. Okay, so two countries left. They are Belgium and Albania. I'll make a small case for either one and then tell you which one I'm putting through. So Belgium, this is really slickly done. Very elegant. I feel like it looks more modern and quite elegant and editorial. There's lovely symmetry in it. The dancer coming on is really well done. You actually see the dancer strolling in in the background and you're kind of like, oh, what's that? And then they walk up to the stage and do this incredible performance. There's great interaction and joy in this. Oh, this really, really should go through. Even though the song's a tiny bit dated, the whole feel is really happy. I hope that the LGBT plus community comes together behind this because this is such a positive message. Really, really lovely. He had a hard time when his song was released and gradually people have fallen in love with him. I feel like it would be a really good conclusion to this story if he was to make it to the final. And I think it's very deserved, it's very fun. And this went down extremely well in the arena when we were watching the dress rehearsal. The other one's Albania. This seems to be a big grower with everybody. The staging is much, much better. It makes more sense. Albina's amazing. She's got this gorgeous ethnic dress on. It's very leaning into the ethnic element of it. The graphics are kind of a mix. There's red blacks at the start, which is very Sacha Jean Baptiste. And then in the later part, we get into these kind of like electricity ball ones, which I have to admit, I don't like as much. The red black ones are much, much cooler and more striking. So it's kind of like half the song is very cool and then the half is like just kind of fine. But yeah, this is a lot of one that people in the press room are putting through. So definitely could make it. 14th is a great running order. It's the only ethnic song. It does look and sound different. So definitely has potential. Of the two, my gut instinct is Belgium. Totally can see this happening, but I just gotta go with my gut. I think we're gonna get at least one surprise in the semi-final. So I am putting this as a borderline because I think it could go through. She's actually performing later. Right now they're on Iceland. I'll have a look at the second dress rehearsal. I don't know if I'll change my opinion, maybe. If I do, I'll leave a graphic here saying that I changed my opinion. <laughs> I don't know how else to do that. I need to start editing this, so I need to get it out. But I'm putting this borderline no, and then I'm gonna put this borderline yes. And again, I'm really hoping the community comes behind this. Okay, so those are my final 10 qualifiers that I think will go through. I think we're more likely to have a shock in this semi-final because although the average standard is a little bit lower, I feel like it's closer. And you know, it would be nice to have some, some surprises. I don't think we had really had that many surprises in the first semi-finals. The first 10 people in the odds all went through. So it would be good to have a bit of a surprise. Let me just check the odds quickly if um, Alik has moved up. Oh, she has moved up, okay. Alik is in 10th now. And Albania's moved up to 11th. Denmark's moved down to 12th. Greece is down to 13th. Okay, so at this point in time, I literally have the top 10 in my, I get, and I you saw me, I literally just looked at those odds. I, I did not know that. My 10 going through currently matches the odds but I didn't know the odds. And in fairness, they've only just gone up. It's not like they've been there for a while. Funnily enough, George is actually down to ninth. So it's not just me who's feeling a little bit anxious about this. I don't know, and ooh, Gustav's gone up to six. God, he, so people are very confident about that. I think when you see this, you'll be blown away. It's really, really, really special. I'm just still putting it there because obviously within the community, a bit of a bubble, there's a little bit more higher percentage of LGBT plus. So possibly there might be a bit more hyping of it because of that. So we need to see do the general public feel the same. I hope they do, because it's really, really lovely and it's a universal message of acceptance. It's a very enjoyable semi-final. I hope that you enjoy it tonight. I will do my shout outs in my next video because I haven't updated my shout out spreadsheet, which I need so I can make sure that I don't miss anyone. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Is there anyone you disagree with? Put in your 10 and we'll see how many that you get right. If you like this analysis video and you want to see more, I will leave a couple of them for you here. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye.